Afternoon my YouTube friends, welcome back to the Motorcycle Fixer channel. This afternoon I'm going to change the brake pads on this GPZ 500. Um, I've got a couple of new projects in the cabin. Our first new project is this GPZ 500. Um, it's rough as. I parked it in the garage probably seven years ago and it was running with a new MOT on it and now I can't find the keys I can't get it into gear and <laughs> just basically I'm probably gonna just sell it as a project for parts um, so if anybody wants to buy it and you live close enough then um, yeah so I got the logbook and it'll be up for sale so we just I'm just gonna do a couple of jobs on this just to maybe show you some things and there's an absolutely terrible rattle can spray job on it if you can see that um, somebody just ratted it out I think but I've just I've since noticed there's a hole in the fuel tank and it hasn't got a massive amount of redeeming features to be honest with you. So, this is our first project and then I've got this BMW F650 engine with a output shaft. It's just totally worn out. I think they welded the sprocket on it and then bought a new engine. Um, I've got a new gearbox for it with a new output shaft so the old whole engine is gonna have to be stripped down that's my little cable for the light yeah so the whole engine is gonna have to be stripped down just to change the output shaft although that's a nice little project for us to go through So today I'm just going to use this bike as basically as a bit of an example. So I'm going to change the front brake pads on it. They were changed um, for the MOT seven years ago. So they are actually new. But if I just go through and show you how you would go about changing the brake pads. If there are any other jobs that you want to see me do on this GPZ 500, leave it in the comments below because until I sell the bike I can just uh, do whatever jobs people want to see. Okay, so changing the brick pads on one of these is fairly straightforward. We just got to And do the two bolts that hold the caliper on. So maybe I should lift that up a little bit. That's a bit better, anyway. Maybe. Okay. When you do just remove these two. Caliper bolts. Just need to store these now in it box keep all the bolts together all the parts that you do so yeah that's the two car bolts taken off and then we can take the brake caliper off the disc as you can see this one it's a bit stiff what you'll find is that if there's if the pads are worn into the shape of the disc and there's a ridge on the edge of the disc there then the brake pads won't slide off over it. Um, so the best thing to do, first of all, we're going to try and uh, give it a tap with our mallet, plastic or hide mallet, really speaking, because it's only aluminium, and you don't want to damage it. So if you've got a hide mallet or a rubber mallet, then we're just going to try and tap the brake pads. 
over the edge of the lip. There we are. And that'll sp just spread the pads a little bit for it to go over the edge of the calibre. As you can see these brake pads, they're not too bad. I've, I think I've only done about maybe 20 miles on them. So there we are. Okay. The next thing we want to do to change these particular brake pads is we're going to push the bridge in. Okay, so th there's our pads. From there we can remove the inner pad should come forward and then we can remove that. It sits on these two tangs either side. I'll show you that when it goes back together now. Then the outer pad, this has to come over the top of our bridge pin. So we need to push the bridge back as far as we can. And then take the pad off like so. So it was on that way. And then take it off. The the backs of these pads are wet because of from just washing the bike so there we are. that one there okay so there's our brake caliber now we can just if we was fitting new brake calipers, we could just put our new set of brake pads in as we just so we could just put our new brake pads in there but what you want to do before you put your new set in I mean you, you need to make sure that your pistons are pushed all the way back when you put new brake pads in obviously because the worn ones are going to be thin and these pistons are going to be out a lot further but before we put the new brake pads in if the best this is always best before you push the pistons back in to the calipers if it's got rust around the front when you push the pistons back in it can cut the seal so it's always best to I'm going to pull the front brake lever now and move the pistons forward as you can see so just the one is moving what I want to do I'll get this one out maybe to there and then if I put a couple of spacers in here like so and then I'll get the other one to move out as well so there we are so what I want to do is get the two pistons out but obviously don't let them come out too far because then all your fluid is going to drain out and then you you've got to push all, put all your pistons back and put all your fluid in and ble uh, bleed it and everything so make sure that the pistons don't come out okay so the next we want to take these spacers out that we've used and we're just going to clean up the front of the pistons before we push them back make sure we don't get any of this rust or any of this crud pushed back into the caliper right so to clean these the fronts of these pistons I'm just going to use I've got I bought a, these little um, wire brushes and as you can see they're great for cl just cleaning off rubbish You've got some brake cleaner and you just want to clean off as much of the stuff as you can so that like as I say when you push it back in and it's not going to cut the seals you could have like some this like that bit there 
is a bit stubborn so I think it's just that it's a bit of rust so you can just use a little bit like you know 1000 grit sandpaper and just clean it it might have a rough edge but to be honest with you, it's going to be better than pushing that back past your seal you want to try and get at the back as well But like I say, what it what you can whatever you can get to, and just try and clean it off. Get a bit cleaner. That's a bit. Just a good bit in the middle there. We're going to try and get off. It is a bit there. Yeah. It's a quite awkward and it's quite a, it's a lump of something. And I'm going to use the blade of my screwdriver, but I mean, they have got chrome plating on them and the chrome is quite hard, but you don't want to like put a scratch in it. So just gently grip any lumps off like that see and then again there's a bit new so I'm just gonna I mean if they're too bad then it, it comes to a time where you've got to change the pistons because they, they will just keep leaking if there's too much rust on the piston and you push it back in there past the seal It'll just cut the seal and it'll just keep leaking. And if they again, if there's like pitting on your piston, the oil will go under the seal through the pitting and then it'll leak. So these ones, I've seen a lot worse to be honest with you. Um, but the, the, the mistake that people do make when they change their brake pads is exactly this they don't do, they don't clean this, they just put, push the piston straight back in. And then you will have trouble. It's okay. Let's have a look, see what that's like. There we go, and that's not too rough now, so. Oh, there's a bit on the back there. I don't know if you can see it, but. A bit just in the back there. Just gonna scrape it off. Like you say, just take your time, isn't it? You're not getting paid by the hour. So, the better the job you do on this part, the less likely is that they're gonna leak. Let's see what they like. Okay, so I'm quite happy with those now. I think that's about the best we're gonna get with these particular pistons. I'm not gonna buy new pistons and seals for these ones because like I say, this bike isn't really a full set of pistons and seals. Probably about 50 quid for this. And the bike getting worth much more than that the way it is. So. Now we're going to push our pistons back in. So we've just got our G-clamp. Fits nice on there. I don't know. Who's been smashing this? It's probably because their brakes were stuck on. Someone looks like someone's been hitting this with an armor. Um, if is if this is a nice new bike with new nice new calipers on it, then you want to put a piece of rubber or a piece of wood on there to stop you from marking it. I'm just gonna do it like this gently. I don't think I can damage it much more than what it is. 
and then you're just going to wind the piston in. Wind it all the way back so you can get your pads in. There we are, that's the one. And the other one back. Ow. Not on your finger though. I'll try not to do it on your finger anyway. And there we are, that's the two of them back. All of our springs are in place. We're going to put our pads in next. What we we'll just want to do is coat the back of your pad with some of this copper slip. Just like so, it's really only the contact area of the piston really, but you can put it on. Make sure you don't get the copper slip on the pad surface. Um, obviously because of slippery brakes it will wear off, but it's best not to get it on there. Okay, so that's one pad, we're going to put this one in with the legs on the sides underneath the bridge. It sits on the spring in the bottom, so you just put it in, push it down underneath those legs underneath the bridge here, can you see? Okay, there we are. And so that's the inner pad. Alright, just put some copper slip on the back of this one. Oh, oh, too much. This stuff gets everywhere. If you get it on your clothes, it takes ages to get out. But it's very good for this. It's too much. Okay, and this one, put. The ring there over that pin, like so, and then you're going to want to push it down like that, and then push this end down over the other pin, like so. There we are. And now the inner one has come out a little bit because the bridge is all the way back, so you can push the bridge forward now. A little bit so that the inner pad stays underneath stay underneath the spring at the bottom is should hold it underneath there and underneath there there we are okay and then we can just fit it back on the wheel making sure that the disc and I know this sounds obvious, but honestly, I've done it in a rush. Make sure that the pads go either side of the disc. Like so. And everything's still in place. The inner pad is still underneath the bridge. Right, we're going to put our two bolts back in. Where are you? One in there. That's not right.
There we are. What threw me then is this two heads on these two holes as well, so we can go either way up. <laughs> but it is these two. There's one in there and one in there. And then we're just going to tighten these back up. Now I would put some copper thread, uh, copper slip, sorry, copper slip on this part here because this is the shaft part, is the part that's in the aluminium and that's the part that if it's going to seize will seize. So there's a lot of this stuff coming out now. I need some more blue roll. Okay, so like I say, just put some, you only need a small amount of copper slip. Just on the shaft of it though, I, I mean, you can get some on the threads, but the threads tighten up by stretching, so they're not going to vibrate loot, loose. So there's the one, let's take this one back out. Like I say, just put some on the shaft. Like so. And then. And then tighten them up. Well, there is a specified torque for it. I just like to make them tight. And that's it, there you have it. What we want to do now is just pull the brake lever now until the caliper seats itself and it's solid. And then if I um do this. Let's show this. Make sure the wheel still spins. Oops, I have to get the front end off the ground. Right, there we are. So the front wheel still spins. And the front brake still works. Here we are. Can't turn it. There's no sponginess, so that's all good. So there you have it. That's how to change your front brake calipers on this type of caliper anyway, um, they're all very similar. You want to just um, you want to just make sure that your brake disc is clean after you've used copper slip around it. And I certainly wouldn't go straight straight out and do 120 miles an hour. You need to when you put new brake pads in, you need to let them bed in to the shape of the disc, especially if you're not changing the disc. And if you are changing the disc, then there's usually a coating on the disc. Sorry, if you are changing the disc, then there's usually a coating on the disc, which you need to wear off as well, going slow for the first at least 10 miles. Uh, so there you have it. If you are, in, if anybody's interested in buying this bike, um, I don't want too much for it. Or if you know somebody else who is, then let me know. In the comments, if there's anything, again, if there's anything you want to see me do to this bike, apart from scrap it, uh, then let me know in the comments. I need to get the engine to at least turn it over and the gear selector working, so that's probably one of the next videos. Don't forget to smash the like button, it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out. So thank you very much for watching and have an awesome week. I'll catch you in the next one.